Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bingham and this is Biochemistry One. Our goal in this segment is to take the first steps toward mastery of the citric acid cycle, the TCA cycle. I'll orient you to what that is in more detail in a moment. The citric acid cycle is long enough that we're going to break it in two parts. And so in this segment, we're going to first get the big picture of what the citric acid cycle looks like, and then we're going to go through the first half of it in detail, and then we'll come back in the next segment and go through the second half of it in detail and add some more insight to it. So remember the larger context in which we're operating here. We've been, most of biochemistry is really about what the sophisticated molecular machines that are the products of genes do in the course of allowing organisms to survive and reproduce. And our concern in this set of segments is that subset of these catalysts, these macromolecular machines, that catalyze the reactions of that flux enormous amounts of matter, small molecules, through our bodies, billions of molecules a day, in order to release the energy that we need to function, to think, and to move, and in order to supply the building block molecules for the continual um, assembly line of replacement parts that our body needs to, uh, to survive. And that, that flux of small molecules through our cells and our bodies is referred to collectively as metabolism. And we spent the last several segments looking at pieces of metabolism. This segment will continue that journey as will the next several segments. Remember, in general, this kind of metabolism, where we're taking in small molecules uh, and liberating their energy uh, in order to uh, drive our movement and thought it is almost all consists of taking reduced hydrocarbons and oxidizing them ultimately in the case of humans by reaction with molecular oxygen taking high energy reduced hydrocarbons and oxidizing them to low energy uh, carbon dioxide uh, usually and water so we've seen several steps toward this oxidation process of glucose we'll see the completion today and in the next segment of the oxidation of glucose all the way to CO2 in water. So remember the last segment we looked at the key step that connects glycolysis to the Krebs cycle. That was the PDH reaction. And remember the, the this complex uh, 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 this macromolecular complex, the PDH complex, catalyzes the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, carbon dioxide, and reduced NAD. And we're now going to be concerned with what that acetyl-CoA goes on to do. But let's put that in a larger context. So the first at the cellular level, remember that the uh, in the cytosol, the large sort of bulk phase of the cytoplasm of cells, there are a number of organelles, including the mitochondrion. Uh, glycolysis that we talked about earlier goes on in the cytosol. We're going to be concerned today, as we were last segment with the PDH, with the mitochondrion. And in particular, in this segment, last segment, and next segment, we're going to be concerned with the matrix of the mitochondrion. So the mitochondrion is actually a double membrane in enclosed um, organelle, and the matrix is inside the second membrane. In other words, two membranes away from the cytosol. The PDH uh, goes on there, activity goes on there, and the TCA or citric acid cycle is going to go on there. And the citric acid cycle or TCA cycle as it's sometimes called, it, it goes on in the mitochondria. And so all day today and in the next segment we're going to be operating in that mitochondrial matrix. So this is the part of metabolism, the beginning of the part of metabolism that we've looked at so far. That is, carbohydrates are generally converted in one way or another to glucose or a glucose-like molecule, and they go through glycolysis to produce pyruvate. And then pyruvate moves into the mitochondrion and is transformed into acetyl-CoA, uh, as we talked about last lecture through PDH. And the acetyl-CoA is indicated here. But we're now going to, as we talk about acetyl-CoA metabol acetyl metabolism going forward, we're going to be talking not only about acetyl-CoA derived from carbohydrates from glucose, but also acetyl-CoA uh, derived from the breakdown of fatty acids, which we'll talk about in future segments. Or some amino acids actually can provide acetyl-CoA or other TCA cycle components. So when we talk about the TCA cycle, we're not just talking about carbohydrate metabolism. We're talking about the central degradative process in all of human or all animal metabolism. Almost all biomolecules, whatever their initial form, that come into our bodies and are oxidized to CO2 and water, virtually without exception, they pass through the TCA cycle. So this cycle, this shaded cycle here at the bottom of this image, in one sense is the most central part of all of metabolism. And so as we go through it, at first glance it'll look a little complicated, but I, what I want you to notice is that it's really just a sequence of eight steps, each one of which is fairly simple and we can understand. And think now for a minute, pause and think about what that means. 
eight simple steps, process almost all the carbon that we take in and all the food that we eat, turn into CO2 and water, give back to us uh, um, energy to keep us going, and also, as we'll talk about in more detail later, building block molecules that we can then borrow and make amino acids or nucleotides or other things out of. All right. This is the TCA cycle, or the Krebs cycle, or the citric acid cycle, as it's variously called. It's been all three of those names are used by different people. We'll mostly call it the citric acid cycle here today, but the other two names are equally useful. So remember that glycolytic pyruvate enters through PDH, and PDH makes acetyl-CoA, but as does fatty acid degradation and some amino acid degradation. So let's now do a quick survey going all the way around this 360 degrees of the Krebs cycle. Get a sense of what we're dealing with here. So it's very easy in, in thinking about the Krebs cycle to get kind of lost in the weeds. That is, you're looking at one little piece of it and you kind of lost the big picture. So the goal of the next few minutes is to try to give you the big picture. And as you're studying this, you may want to come back to this short segment of the video and watch it several times as your expertise grows. And that way, each piece that you learn in detail, you can put into this larger picture. Because once you understand the larger picture, it becomes much easier to grasp each and remember each of these biochemical details. So here again is this big blow up of the TCA cycle, the uh, citric acid cycle. Here is the first reaction. This reaction is catalyzed by citrate synthase. And notice what goes on here. We're taking acetyl-CoA from pyruvate dehydrogenase or from another source, fatty acid degradation, for example. And we're combining it with oxaloacetate, the tail end of this 360-degree uh, cycle. And we're combining them through an enzyme called citrate synthase to make citrate. That's the first step. So we're taking a two-carbon compound, a four-carbon compound, joining them to make a six-carbon compound citrate, which we're now going to burn back down to four carbons, releasing two CO2s in the process uh, to complete the cycle. So what are we doing? What's one of the things the cycle is doing? It's oxidizing uh, 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 the two-carbon unit in acetyl-CoA is being ultimately oxidized to CO2 and water. We're also going to extract oxygen and do some other things with it, as you'll see. But we've taken that first step. We've made the six-carbon compound that we're about to oxidize back to a four-carbon compound as we transit the cycle. So the next step is aconitase. This enzyme is actually doing something that seems rather pointless. It's just rearranging citrate into isocitrate. Uh, as you'll see, it's not pointless. It actually turns out to be crucial to subsequent chemistry. So this is a, a move you have to make in anticipation of a future biochemical move you're going to make. It's like sacrificing a pawn in chess or something. You have to make a move to make the next move. All right. That is, that is called, uh, it's catalyzed by an enzyme, this rearrangement of citrate to isocitrate, by an enzyme called aconitase for historical reasons. So the next step, the third step, is catalyzed by isocitrate dehydrogenase. And this enzyme does exactly what you think it does. It's going to extract reducing potential from isocitrate. That reducing potential is going to go on, as we'll see later, to yield energy uh, in, in indirectly. Let's not worry about that right now. Think of reduced NAD as the equivalent of, of a couple of ATP molecules, as, as it is, as you'll see later. And what's the other thing that isocitrate dehydrogenase is going to do? It's going to release the CO2. So this is a step in releasing uh, oxid formally reduced carbon in its oxidized form CO2, driving the overall uh, process. Okay, so that's isocitrate dehydrogenase. Much more about each of these steps in detail later. We're just getting the big picture now. Just clicking around the clock, understanding in general what's, gonna, what's happening. The next step in the process is alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. It's going to take the product of isocitrate dehydrogenase, that product being alpha-ketoglutarate. And what's it going to do? It's going to um, uh, take acetyl-CoA, I'm sorry, CoA, and produce succinyl CoA. It's also going to produce CO, release the CO2, and it's going to make an oxidize. It's going to make a reduced NAD out of an oxidized NAD. So let's take a breath here. First of all, alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is releasing a CO2. So this is the second of two carbons. So we, we imported two carbons as acetyl, from the acetyl-CoA, and we've now released two carbons. As you'll see, we're not releasing those acetyl-CoA uh, carbons directly. I have to go around the cycle several times to do that. We'll come back to that in the next segment. But we're, our books are balanced. We took in uh, two carbons, two new carbons. We've released two carbons, so we're back to a four-carbon compound. From six <laughs>